Hello, my name is uh, Tamara Bolina. I'm a senior software engineer uh, with the 3D team here in Esri. And today I would like to talk to you about I3S, uh, Index 3D Scene Layer Standard. And in particular, uh, we'll talk about and see some demonstration of I3S support in various open frameworks. This presentation is organized around uh, discussing a little bit about the I3S standard uh, effort that we've been putting in uh, getting the I3S standard uh, or the I3S specification being standardized. Um, but majority of the uh, discussion uh, or presentation revolves around I3S support in various open uh, open frameworks, um, visualization frameworks uh, such as uh, Loaders GL and Deck GL. Uh, modules available in the uh, VisGL framework, uh, as well as uh, some work that we have done with the open community, um, being able to transcode uh, from uh, some uh, popular geospatial format, just 3D tiles to I3S, and vice versa. Uh, we'll also take a look in uh, I3S support current version of I3S17 support in CZMJS. This is uh, a continuing work uh, that we've been again doing with the open community and trying to get more adoption of I3S uh, in open frameworks. And then lastly, we'll visit also um, the newest member of uh, the OGC standard of I3S, uh, PCSL, um, and some toolings out there, uh, particularly in PDLIO, that allows you to convert from PCSL uh, to uh, various last formats. I3S uh, was uh, uh, the first uh, OGC community standard to be adapted for uh, streaming large amounts of uh, heterogeneous 3D geospatial datasets. Uh, this format has uh, now been under development for the last uh, uh, it's eight years, if not longer, and uh, the OGC community has adapted it in the fall of 2017 as Index 3D Scene Layer Community Standard. Uh, this community standard currently is at version 1.1, and you might have noticed that there's a versioning difference between the I3S, uh, uh, I3S uh, specification shared by ESRI uh, compared to the I3S standard in OGC. Uh, this is because the uh, OGC, the uh, Open Geospatial Consortium, has chosen to take uh, static snapshots of the I3 standard and adapt them uh, through its own process. Um, however, I3S uh, was uh, developed uh, or designed uh, from the get-go to be both uh, cloud and web as well as mobile friendly and is based on modern standards and, and best practices. Um, now, as I said, it's been out there for uh, for a while now, but it's really a living, breathing uh, specification. Uh, the I3S standard has been evolving ever since it's been uh, publicly uh, publicly shared in 2015, and uh, even since it has been adopted by OGC in the late uh, in in the in the fall of 2017. And the evidence of that is. Uh, uh, I3S addition to uh, new layer types, uh, particularly, uh, for example, um, in the f uh, in uh, two 2020, uh, OGC adapted the point cloud scene layer a specification that has been available with I3S for a while. Uh, this uh, specification or standard has been adapted as an OGC I3S 1.1 community standard, and uh, it's available uh, for the public uh, or for the open community to use. I3S is organized around profiles and uh, layer types, um, and I3S really revolves about revolves around the concept of a profile. A profile being a group of layers or a group of uh, layer types that have the same uh, uh, visualization and uh, uh, data creation or bounding volume criteria uh, being grouped as one type. So we have uh, uh, right now adapted in the OGC three 
profile types um, of uh, the A3 standard, mesh pyramids, point, and point cloud. Uh, the mesh pyramids profile has uh, two layer types, uh, namely 3D object and integrated mesh. Uh, 3D objects are your typical uh, 3D meshes uh, uh, that are organized around a feature, a feature attribute. Um, so they typically represent, you know, 3D objects uh, typically represent buildings or entities that has a feature identity. Um, entities that could be associated with some tabular or attribute information. Uh, on the other hand, integrated mesh are uh, layer types that, uh, or uh, integrated mesh layer types, uh, marry both texture and geometry together and cover vast amounts of area and are typically collected by drone or or aerial photography, photograph, photogrammetry means and uh, cover vast amounts of areas. Uh, but both of these layer types uh, share similar uh, data structure and are hence uh, termed as mesh pyramids. Um, points um, are yet another layer types that are supported in I3S as well as, as I mentioned earlier, point cloud that has been adopted uh, uh, as the last member of the I3S 1.1 community standard by OGC. Um, so these four layer types are OGC standard approved uh, layer types. And then as an evolving uh, breezing uh, specification, and we'll take this through the uh, standardization process in, in, in its own course and time, uh, there has been a new addition to the I3 standard um, the last year, uh, which is a building scene layer. This has been uh, shared again to the community and one is mature enough to be uh, included as uh, uh, the OGC standard uh, will, will, will be doing so. But I3S's uh, evolution uh, is not uh, only in the areas of adding new layer types or new use cases. We're also actively working and trying to improve the current I3 standard, uh, particularly when it comes to performance, uh, when it comes to better aesthetics uh, or uh, better representation of the uh, real world. And as you can see here in the video, uh, current I3S version, I3S 1.7, supports uh, materials, advanced materials that allow you to model uh, that has actually GLTF uh, compatible uh, features that uh, would allow you uh, to render and display high uh, objects with very high realism. The i 3 17 is now under um, OGC adoption consideration. Uh, this means OGC has taken a snapshot of uh, uh, we have this means we have presented a snapshot of the i3s 1.7 uh, specification uh, to the OGC and OGC is going through the uh, process of standardizing and adapting this uh, format. Uh, i3s 1.7 brings uh, as I mentioned uh, enhanced visual aesthetics uh, by supporting advanced materials uh, and um, enhanced performance, uh, namely it supports a uh, page node access pattern uh, which will significantly reduce the client server traffic uh, by paging a group of nodes uh, or tile sets together. Um, it has a, a more compact geometry. Uh, I3S 1.7 now supports uh, Draco compression for compressing the binary geometry data and this is uh, essential in lowering the bytes uh, that are transferred from the client to server. Um, in addition, uh, optimal selection criteria, selection criteria that a client application will employ to uh, select the content on a screen um, is now based on uh, oriented bounding boxes, which allows you to have a more efficient uh, or a more conservative um, uh, fetching and selection uh, criteria that could be used by the client application to uh, select content. Uh, as part of this I3S 1.7, we've recognized uh, the need to be able to update or upgrade uh, earlier versions of I3S. So we've released an open source uh, converter uh, that uh, an open source converter 
or free to use converter that uh, people or that uh, users can use to convert or upgrade their existing I3s content. There are various um, content providers and uh, uh, application, which is actually the uh, topic of discussion today, that are supporting I3s, uh, namely, uh, as you can see here on this slide, um, major data providers, 3D content provi providers such as Rikon, Nearmap, uh, Context Capture from Bentley, uh, Pix4D, IGSOP, and so on and so forth, uh, have uh, star have been delivering I3s content to their clients. Um, the latest addition to this slide would be, as I mentioned earlier, Lotus GL and Deck GL. Now being able to consume and support I3S is a new addition that we uh, we worked with uh, that community to be able to support it, um, as well as uh, new uh, output I3S output uh, formats from companies such as Nframes and uh, Geoscene that that are also able to support uh, consuming and generating I3S. But today I wanted to really uh, talk about. Um, I3S support around open source solutions. So, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, opening, VizGL, we're very excited to uh, work with the VizGL community in supporting I3S in Lotus GL and Deck GL. Uh, this work has been going on for about a year and a half now, and for about a year, and uh, currently an I3S layer, uh, an integrated mesh and 3D object layers, can be directly used in the uh, uh, in the VizGL framework. Um, now, this is very significant work. Um, Loaders GL really simplifies um, the effort that uh, a 3D developer would need to do in consuming uh, complex data sets, uh, 3D tile streaming. Uh, 3D streaming, 3D streaming formats are not very are not trivial, uh, but uh, by leveraging open frameworks such as Lotus GL, uh, would make it much easier to be able to traverse and uh, decode uh, the content that is uh, streamed or uh, or supported by I3s. Another effort that uh, we've been working on with the open community is. The ability to convert from uh, one format to I3s and and vice versa. So um, uh, one work that we've been doing with uh, uh, Open Community uh, is to be able to convert 3D tiles to I3s and uh, vice versa. And in this work, uh, you are now able to convert a 3D tiles a batch 3D model to an I3s integrated mesh scene layer. Uh, as well as uh, a 3D tile spice 3D model uh, plus some hierarchy extension uh, to an I3s 3D object seen there. This really achieves interoperability between different and various uh, uh, 3D streaming formats. Um, the ability to convert uh, 3D tiles uh, to both uh, scene layer package and I3s uh, streaming format I3s REST is really key in that um, open community would be able to exchange data uh, both in I3S REST format as well as 3D scene layer package and vice versa also from I3S to uh, 3D tiles and we believe this actually uh, broadens the usage of I3S and uh, really advances the geospatial uh, in community uh, to a, a better uh, place. Um, Conversely, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this tool is also now capable of converting from I3s to 3D tiles. Um, right now, it supports outputting an I3s uh, 1.7. Uh, this is great in that I3s 1.7 has all the optimization and uh, enhancement that I mentioned earlier. And this tool is, is capable of taking advantage of converting an I3s 1.7 to a 3D tiles version 1.0. Um, currently, it supports uh, when you are going from an I3s, uh, uh, we are going from I3s uh, uh, to 3D tiles because the only supported uh, uh, 
the only supported uh, coordinates reference system in 3D Solids is WGS84 will only support uh, outputting that. Uh, but uh, one thing that I would like to mention is that uh, this converter tool actually um, correctly handles uh, height differences between various systems. For example, I3S uh, typically, uh, though it's not the only uh, height system that it supports, a most common format for I3S uh, happens to be an orthometric height system or gravity-based uh, uh, gravity height. Uh, whereas uh, 3D tiles and um, other systems such as cesium would prefer an ellipsoidal uh, height model. So a conversion between such uh, height model systems is required to be able to visualize the content at the intended uh, height uh, it was authored with. And the converter tool uh, actually supports uh, transcoding tiles and content from orthometric to ellipsoidal and vice versa. Here's a quick look of what the uh, command line interface of the converter tool looks like. Uh, it's very straightforward. Um, this tool is provided as a, a Node.js module and um, I, for usage, the usage of this tool is very straightforward. Uh, typically, uh, what you will do is uh, there are a few parameters that you need to set, including the input type, um, as well as uh, the uh, tile set, uh, whether it's uh, I3S or uh, 3D tiles, you would just point to the uh, resource, the, the tile set resource, and uh, output data. Uh, the converter tool also optionally allows you to convert um, up to a certain depth. And this is kind of useful when you are dealing with um, very large and high depth data uh, that you'd like to be able to convert to a certain depth uh, for testing and validation purposes. Uh, also note that uh, the tool, the converter tool, allows you to specify what uh, uh, height model conversion uh, system you'd like to use. Uh, currently, the tool uh, uses the Earth gravity model, the PGM files, um, for, for the conversion purpose of uh, from orthometric to ellipsoidal. Uh, but depending on your need, you can supply higher resolution EGM models or a coarser one. Again, uh, based on uh, on your um, particular use case. So the requirements uh, for running the tool is really uh, Node.js. Uh, and uh, the location of the uh, PGM file uh, where you'd like to use it. In fact, in the current version of the tool, uh, you can also automatically install, install all the uh, required um, uh, dependencies by just invoking a high dash dash install. Second option of this tool is uh, to use it as an NPM package, uh, you can uh, run uh, this. Uh, so one thing that I would like to mention is that this tool is available both as uh, both on Windows and uh, Unix, uh, both on Windows and Linux uh, platforms, um, and uh, it can be used um, directly um, both on. Uh, it's provided both the source code for creation and um, uh, the executable are provided. Um, so another way of accessing the converter tool is uh, from as an NPM package and uh, using NPX uh, we can uh, just uh, run the same uh, command as you can see. Um, and then lastly uh, you can also access the same tool uh, from Docker. There's a Docker image available for it. Uh, the links for it will be included in the um, uh, PowerPoint presentation. And you will be able to uh, run, again, this as a uh, Docker image. Uh, uh, so three ways of running uh, the converter tool uh, is available. Now I'd like to talk about a little bit about uh, work that we've been doing with uh, the open community in supporting uh, I3S natively in in the cesium uh, uh, in cesium uh, 
Node.js application. This is uh, work that uh, we've been just sharing to the community now. It's a, uh, an open source uh, work that we're doing with a, uh, a company called Presages uh, that allowed us to be able to consume directly an I3S, um, an I3S resource in CZMJS. And again, this uh, helps uh, the, uh, the idea being this helps the, uh, the idea being uh, there has been a lot of ask in uh, I3S users, uh, ArcGIS and, and others to be able to use it in different ecosystem. And uh, we believe that um, the adoption of I3S will be uh, much more, uh, much more uh, augmented by uh, supporting all these uh, different open frameworks. Another area that we've been working in I3S is I3S and uh, machine learning and deep learning. In particular, being able to uh, segment uh, a portion of a data, being able to do uh, mesh segmentation has been a key area of interest for us, uh, our users, and there's a plenty of I3S data set and uh, mesh data set that, has been, that is being generated. And uh, automatically uh, selecting and uh, automatically uh, being able to select and identify a mesh using deep learning and AI is an area that uh, we've been working on uh, in the uh, we've been working on um, similarly for point cloud data uh, being able to classify uh, point cloud data uh, using uh, deep learning frameworks such as point CNN has also be an area that we've been actively working. Um, so in essence, I3S is well suited for uh, uh, AI and deep learning manipulation. Um, as a result, uh, uh, early uh, in uh, in the spring uh, in the spring of 2020, we released uh, a module in ArcGIS.Learn uh, API. We released ArcGIS.Learn uh, module, added point CNN as a neural network to be able to efficiently segment uh, point cloud data sets, uh, segment uh, uh, points from a point cloud data set. And this uh, segmentation, this work has now been also continuing to mesh data and being able to uh, segment meshes is an area that we've been actively working on in, uh, our, in the R&D phase. At this point, I would like to switch to uh, uh, demos and show you uh, some of the uh, content that I've been talking about. So let's have a quick look at the uh, I3S standard. Um, the I3S standard is available at the GitHub. Uh, this is where uh, latest and uh, newest version of the I3S specification would go to. And um, you, there is a landing page as well as uh, the, the format specification uh, that details the different layer types that are supported on I3S, uh, 3D objects, integrated mesh, point, point cloud, as well as uh, the latest one that has been shared, uh, shared building scene layer. And um, this format has been evolving over the years and the documentation here really details how to use an I3S content uh, from data provider point of view, as well as from consumer point of view. Uh, the OGC version of the specification, as I said before, OGC takes a static snapshot of the uh, spec, and currently the current version is at uh, uh, version 1.1. That includes uh, the uh, four layer types I mentioned before, including uh, point cloud scene layer. And currently, as I mentioned earlier, we're, uh, uh, we're going through the process of getting the yeah, I3S 1.7 adapted through the uh, OGC uh, standardization process. Um, so let's take a look at uh, what uh, looks like. So uh, this is the proposed OGC 1.2 community standard, uh, basically adapting the I3S 1.7 specification. Uh, you will see that uh, enhanced realism is added here because of the support of uh, uh, enhanced materials uh, in the in, in I3S layer. Uh, this is an integrated mesh layer for Frankfurt, uh, generated by uh, data partner uh, N-Frames. Um, and 
uh, you can see that uh, the performance is better uh, because uh, as I mentioned earlier i3s uh, 1.7 uh, or the proposed uh, OGC 1.2 standard uh, bundles much more content and see uh, the previous version is still loading while this one is done uh, loading similarly here when I switch to different views uh, you uh, will see that you know the update of the scene is done here uh, as well as uh, the update of the scene is done here uh, much faster in the 1.7 uh, or OGC 1. or the proposed OGC 1.2 community standard now let's look, take a look at uh, uh, open frameworks that support uh, i3s so I mentioned earlier uh, Lotus GL and deck GL being able to support i3s and um, here we can take a look as an example of uh, i3s support in uh, Lotus GL uh, this is a 3d objects layer uh, we can change the base map to be a little bit lighter uh, this is uh, 3d objects there supported directly uh, consuming by uh, by directly consuming an i3s rest endpoint in uh, loader's jail uh, performance is very good uh, and is interactive and is able to uh, display i3s content again by uh, directly taking advantage of all the optimization available within the system um, if we take a look at uh, in the IDE, uh, this is uh, again the value that uh, being able to support I3S in open frameworks really what it brings is that uh, the ease of use for um, especially for non-geospatial developers and uh, 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 3D developers uh, it makes it much easier to be able to um, uh, consume uh, very specialized and highly optimized uh, services uh, such as i3s uh, as you can see here um, typically uh, so uh, the usage of this uh, content is very easy um, as you can see uh, you will just uh, initialize um, uh, the uh, resource the i3s resource that you would like to consume and uh, you will be able to just find uh, a new uh, layer type um, we have uh, worked with the Lotus GL community to add a new module called i3s that allows all the uh, data traversal decoding of the uh, geometry type uh, as well as uh, uh, creating the content uh, and uh, format that is ingestible in Lotus GL is all there uh, in this framework um, so as a user as a as a consumer of this API you'll be able to just directly use it uh, among with the other data set the Lotus GL community supports. Um, so we, we strongly believe that this is uh, an easy to use uh, API and, uh, and uh, greatly enhances the usage of I3S. Um, 3D, so what you're seeing here is a 3D objects I3S layer, uh, but uh, integrated mesh is also supported. And I can quickly show you by switching to an integrated mesh there right in the ID itself um, for a new data set um, again a very interactive and uh, very uh, easy to use and able to uh, take advantage of most of the uh, uh, optimizations available with an i3s um, <clears throat> oops in this one uh, moving on uh, I discussed a little bit about uh, uh, the different uh, converters that are avail available there again in the uh, uh, this is a standalone converter uh, the uh, command line utility that allows you to convert um, uh, from 3d tiles to i3s uh, format and from i3s to uh, 3d tiles uh, this uh, utility is available as CLI uh, you can also get access to it as a, a Docker image. You can uh, just directly grab it uh, as a Docker image and uh, run it, uh, as well as also as an NPM module. Um, so this various uh, deployment uh, modules of uh, yeah, of uh, of the converter we hope would allow the uh, usage or conversion of I3s content from one format to another format. Um, this example shows i3s usage in ccmjs as i mentioned earlier 
this is uh, an ongoing work that we have uh, uh, started working with uh, uh, a company called uh, Prestigious. And uh, the idea being able to consume I3S content directly in CZM.js. Um, as you can see here, uh, there are many different data types uh, that are listed, example services. And uh, basically, uh, I would be able to uh, uh, run on this um, sandbox, on the sandcastle, and be able to consume an I3S layer by directly connecting to the uh, service. And uh, this, again, without having to uh, convert uh, directly to uh, uh, a 3D types format uh, is very powerful. Uh, the transcoding is happening on the client side, right here on the uh, JavaScript client side application. And uh, performance and uh, utility of this uh, looks pretty good. Um, uh, not only can we get just the geometry and the texture associated with this i3 service, but any attribute information associated with, uh, with it uh, can also be uh, grabbed. As you can see, uh, we're just uh, uh, showing the attributes that are associated with it. Uh, but uh, this is uh, really uh, uh, full support of an I3S 1.7 for 3D objects and integrated mesh. Um, so the idea being uh, you'd be able to take advantage of all the features available within the I3S layer. So as I zoom around and click on the object, you notice that um, yeah, the uh, attribute uh, pop-up here uh, changes. Um, we can take a look at another example real quick. Here is another example for New York that I can quickly type in here and just run it again similarly we'll connect to the service and uh, load the data and we'll start uh, streaming uh, the content uh, to the view uh, this is quite large data set uh, for New York um, if I turn around this is over 1.4 million buildings um, but because of the multi-LOD data structure in an I3S uh, layer, you notice that um, the uh, uh, scene renders uh, very efficiently. And uh, as I get closer to the objects or of interest or to the uh, uh, to the surface, uh, you notice that you know it it, it uh, uh, renders or responds by uh, loading higher levels of details. Again taking advantage of the full uh, I3S uh, uh, optimization available and also being able to uh, show any attribute information associated with uh, any of the buildings. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about uh, two of the uh, uh, solutions uh, that I uh, discussed in the slide. Um, PDAL.io now has a support for, uh, has a reader support for uh, point cloud scene layer. So uh, uh, in PDAL.io, you'll be able to actually connect to an I3S service as well as uh, uh, SLPK and being able, and you should be able to convert that to uh, different uh, various uh, 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 file structure. Um, uh, one of uh, the most popular aspects of this is being able to connect to an I3S uh, dataset and output a LAS uh, dataset and various forms of uh, a LAS uh, are supported. Um, so again, uh, another area where I3S has been uh, making headways in, in uh, getting open community support. Finally, um, I would like to talk to you about a little bit about the work that we've been doing uh, in the areas of 3D and deep learning and AI. Uh, earlier uh, last year, in March 2020, uh, we shared uh, our point CNN implementation for uh, segmenting point cloud dataset. Uh, this implementation uh, is, share is shared in the ArcGIS API for Python and uh, um, any user could get access to this uh, module and be able to uh, uh, use it to do uh, point cloud classification. Um, and 
just in the last month, uh, we were also able to share a few deep learning packages, ready-made packages that you'd be able to use in your uh, deep learning training and uh, prediction. Uh, one that I would like to mention is the power line classification uh, deep learning package that we shared that would allow users to classify power lines, um, power lines based on the deep learning package that we provide. As you can see from the snapshot, the uh, deep learning model is able to efficiently predict uh, power lines and uh, power line towers efficiently. Um, and uh, this uh, deep learning package uh, would be able to be used in the ArcGIS API, the ArcGIS uh, Python API, uh, as, well as, uh, as well as the ArcGIS Pro desktop application. Thank you for uh, attending this uh, session. Uh, please do not forget to fill in the uh, session feedback, uh, which you can find the survey link directly below the video.